in this short but informative lecture, we'll be talking about soil physical properties. There's just a few different physical properties of soil that are important for the farmer or the horticulturalist or gardener or landscaper. Things to keep in mind, they can help you understand the soil better and of course, how it can support the plants that you grow in it better. This is review, but one of the most important soil properties is the soil profile, which you've already measured the organic layer or the O horizon and the um, top soil, the A horizon. Um, and the full profile, again, we've just gone over this before in other lectures, but doing it again because it's technically part of the soil properties, uh, the physical properties. So um, A horizon is the organic matter, slightly decomposed leaves, sticks, dead animals and things that are on top of the soil. O horizon for organic or the overdressing layer. And um, if you want to build this up, you put layers of mulch, compost, things that are like an O layer and um, build it up. But really the whole purpose of the O horizon is to further decompose and become part of the A horizon when it's all the way decomposed. The A horizon, minerals, humus, which is organic matter and a bunch of different car compounds that are helpful to supporting plant life. Um, it's the top layer, it's called the A layer. I nicknamed it the animal layer because that's the place in the A horizon where all the different soil organisms live. That's where the moisture is, that's where the air is, that's where the organisms are, that's where the roots are that absorb the nutrients and water. So um, it's usually darker colored and um, has the minerals and things in it that are broken down by organic, They're, they become minerals by being organic matter broken down by the soil organisms and the soil food web. Beneath that is what is called the subsoil, it's below the topsoil, the B horizon, and most of the biological activity is above the B horizon, in the A horizon, and, and the O. Um, sometimes things in the B horizon are materials that have washed down from the O and A horizons. And um, roots do go into the B horizon, and mostly to stabilize the plant, but sometimes to seek deeper water sources. Um, the C horizon is underneath that under the B horizon. It's very little weathered, somewhat weathered material and um, parent material like bedrock. Um, and it's something you would never encounter really when you're digging, um, possibly when you're doing, you know, using large machinery for excavation, you might get down to that. You don't really want to bring it up to the higher, um, sh more shallower areas. It's not good soil and it's just meant to be down there weathering. And then below that, the bedrock, the R layer. Soil color is another physical property that can help clue you into the type of soil it is. Um, this is just the color, Munsell color system that um, it can, it's used in art and textiles and with soils too, but there's three axes to this or three aspects of color. The hue, um, the chroma, or the value. The hue is what we would think of as like the color and the chroma is the intensity of that color, and the value is the lightness or darkness of that color, and they are three distinct things. And if you're an artist, you might already know this by if you've done any kind of oil painting and mixing paints. Um, these are different aspects. So in soil, um, we're thinking about for hue, like how the redness or yellowness of the soil is usually what the hue is relating to. The chroma is the intensity of that color, and the value is the lightness and darkness of that. And as I said in the earlier slide, the lighter it is, usually the less organic matter it has in it, almost all the time, and the less fertile it is. It often relates to the soil being deeper. So the deeper you go, the lighter it gets because you have less organic matter and less minerals. It's not always true, but it's often true. Let's talk about a little more about the soil color and, and what influences soil color. So of course, organic matter influences soil color, the darker brown the soil is, or the blacker it is, usually the higher levels of organic matter. Um, there are other things too, the oxidation states of irons or manganese elements in the soil. The more oxidized the iron, the more reddish it is, 
and the more oxidized the manganese in the soil is, it tends to be more bluish or greenish. And if it's very uh, high in organic matter, it can mask those other colors by just being so dark. Water has an effect on soil color. Um, the wetter soils are usually darker, um, but also when there's more, more um, water or moisture, it can influence the oxygen and the amount of oxidation. For example, really well-drained soils, um, the irons in them can be well oxidized and impart a bright red color and, or brown. Um, poorly drained soils uh, usually have poorly oxidized iron. The iron that's in them does not get oxidized, so you have a gray or bluish. So you know, you kind of already know this, just you know, layperson's knowledge of um, oxidized iron, it's like rust, it's kind of reddish. So, and that's, um, that's from exposure to oxygen and it turns reddish. I mean, we think of rust too as uh, exposure to water, but it's water and then the oxygen that gives the reddish color. But in soils, so uh, the, the less moist, it can tend to have a reddish color. Again, so you look at the color and all these other properties and that can help you understand the soil's chemistry and how it's gonna perform for your plants. There's also soil structure. It's the arrangement of the primary soil particles into groupings called aggregates or PEDs. And the pattern of the PEDs and pores, which make up the soil structure, really do have a big influence on how the water moves through the soil, the transfer of heat through the soil, the aeration, and the porosity. So those little chunks, PEDs is from soil science, meaning in Latin meaning foot, um, how those kind of congregate together, aggregate, make up the structure of the soil. Um, and again, that, that influences its performance. A few different types of PEDs. Um, four principal shapes of the soil structure of these PEDs can be spheroidal, kind of just like little granular roundish crumbs and very, it's really a good type of a soil, like organic soils, loamy soils, topsoil, the A horizon, usually have kind of nice roundish little chunks that are small. Platy are flat layers of stru the structure is flattish. And you see those in the E horizon, which I haven't talked about, but that, well, I did in one slide in the past lecture, but it's a leach layer. And sometimes you see those form in between um, underneath the B horizon or even between the A and the B horizon. It's, these are signs of compaction when you see platy soil structure. There's prism-like too, that forms a little columnar peds, prism um, shaped, kind of elongate and that's often in the subsoil or arid soils. And there's also block-like angular chunks that are the structure, the structural peds, and you see those in both the A and the B horizons and in humid soils. And here are those soil structure types, the ped shapes that can form, and um, a little bit about their, some of these images have sizes related to those pads themselves. Soil density. Too dense of a soil, not so good. Too little density, not so good. You want something in the middle. So if it's really dense, it means there's not a lot of open pores and space. The roots can't even push through it, especially if that soil is dry. So that's just mechanically impenetrable but to the plant roots. Um, but again, if it's really loose, like uh, the density of like sand is just too low for it to hold on to any nutrients and water. So that also isn't so good. It doesn't support plants very well either. The soil strength can also inhibit root penetration. A penetrometer is a, a really, it's like a compaction meter. It, it tells you how compacted your soil is. And um, the compaction increases the bulk density of the soil and the soil strength, but that can restrict root growth. So again, you want a middle of the road type of density of soil. As clay content increases, your pore size decreases. You can think of my analogy between soils that are really sandy. It's like a jar of marbles, you know, on big scale, lots of big open pores, but the water runs right through it. Um, but, but penetrability, like how well the roots can penetrate it is probably really good. But then you think of a jar of flour that would be like clay particles. And um, there's hardly any, any pore space in there. It gets very compact and the roots would have a hard time pushing through it. 
So if the bulk density was the same with a clay soil or clayey soil and a sandy soil, roots could more easily penetrate the sandy soil. But you want something in between, because as we learned earlier, clay soils are the ones that hold on to the plant nutrients, a big, uh, a large number of the really important plant nutrient cations. So you do want clay, but just not too much. And root growth can occur in wet soils um, that are really bulky, but only really up to certain densities, like the 1.45 um, megagrams per cubic meter in clays and 1.85 in loamy soils. So in a loamy soil, the density can be higher because the organic matter in there and the higher levels of silt and sand and not too much clay, um, that, that soil is already pretty balanced and it won't get as compact, so it can be denser. But if you have too much clay and it's dense, it's just gonna be like a brick and roots can't get through it. Soil porosity relates to permeability. It's just the pore space. Imagine if you cut away down into the soil and you could see all the roots and the soil, but also little holes and channels that go down into the soil. Those are the pores, the open space. And that's how water infiltrates. The pore space is often formed by larger chunks or peds of the soil, the structure, but also by organic means, uh, roots pushing down through the soil and then dying and leaving an opening. Um, the pore space is, is where water is held too, and air is held, both really important for plants and for the organisms in the soil, supporting the plants. So you need both. And the higher the porosity, the more permeable, the higher the uh, rate that water will flow into and through the soil. And porosity is a function of particle size, like I said, and the arrangement of those particles and partly um, also plant growth is what helps them. Clays reduce porosity and reduce permeability. They say like here in Southern California, if you, um, in general, coastal soils are pretty clayey. So um, having your lawn sprinklers on more than five to seven minutes is too much because those clay soils can absorb some water, but it doesn't sink in much. So you've saturated your lawn soil within five minutes. And if you leave your irrigation, your sprinklers on for longer than five minutes, the rest is just gonna run right off into the street or wherever. So clay soils reduce the permeability, which can affect the plant growth. And the larger the pores, the faster the movement of water through that soil. Here's two short videos showing you, I like the graphics of showing you water movement through the soil. Me in an audio recording, just describing to you how water is moving um, may help some of you, but most people are benefit by seeing some kind of graphic visual of how water actually is moving through the soil. And it can help you because as landscapers or horticulturalists, we're like farmers too. We, we stare at the plants and what's happening above ground and we don't know what's going on underneath. So this can kind of help you visualize, kind of like I always say, it's like having x-ray eyes. You, you, your knowledge can help you understand what's going on underneath, which could be causing what you're seeing above ground. Maybe your plants aren't looking too good or they're growing slowly or not getting the nutrients. And you have to look at the above ground symptoms to understand the, the problem with the soil. These videos are short um, and I put times in them so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Just watch the time stamp that I gave you so you can just get a quick little visual of water movement through soil types.